So non-invasive oxygenation and ventilation using a bag mask ventilator device. Essentially, this is gonna be your initial approach to any patient you encounter that is critically ill, who's hypoxemic and ventilatory failure, or as preparation and part of pre-oxygenation for intubation. So standard equipment for non-invasive oxygenation and ventilation with a bag mask ventilator device. We're gonna begin with high flow nasal prongs attached to at least 15 liters of oxygen at a wall source or secondary tank. Our second source of oxygen is attached to the back of our bag mask ventilator. Again, this source at 15 liters per minute attached to the wall or a secondary O2 tank. That connects to our bag mask ventilator device, which should be checked and confirmed that all pieces uh, are attached and tightly put together uh, beforehand. Our next step is dealing with obstruction. The first is soft tissue obstruction, which we deal with or manage with nasal pharyngeal airways, one or more, as well as oral pharyngeal airways appropriately sized for the patient. The second source of obstruction is alveolar obstruction. We can manage that non-invasively with a disposable peep valve. These fit together on our bag mask ventilator devices by snapping snugly together and essentially dialing the cap to the desired level of positive pressure that you want. A tight fitting mask then connects to your bag mask ventilator and is held to the patient's face with two hands to ensure an appropriate seal. Finally, some additional equipment if difficulty is encountered with non-invasive oxygenation and ventilation include things like extraglottic or supraglottic devices. Common ones that you'll see include this device, which is an LMA Supreme, or more commonly used in a pre-hospital environment, the King LT. So non-invasive oxygenation and ventilation in a traumatically injured patient. The first step that we're going to do is remove, so either open or remove the C-spine collar. We're going to ensure that an assistant is holding inline stabilization, recognizing that the collar can absolutely cause some soft tissue obstruction. We're going to follow the principles of the four twos, or the rule of twos, which is two sources of oxygen for all sick patients. Our first source of oxygen are high flow nasal prongs. They're gonna be placed on the patient and attached to an oxygen source of at least 15 liters per minute on the wall or a secondary O2 tank. The second source of oxygen is gonna be going in the back of our bag mass ventilator, again at 15 liters per minute to the wall or a secondary O2 tank. We're gonna begin by dealing with soft tissue obstruction. Right? Soft tissue obstruction is either dealt with with a nasal pharyngeal airway, sizing for a nasal, nasal pharyngeal airway, again, held up to the side of the patient's face, this time from the patient's nostril or nose to the ear or to the ankle of the mandible to appropriately size for the patient in front of you. One or more placed directly into the patient with our high flow nasal prongs and placed directed down through the nasal trumpet. Additionally, we can manage soft tissue obstruction with an oral pharyngeal airway sized appropriately for this particular patient. And so appropriate sizing for an oral pharyngeal airway essentially can be estimated by holding the device up to the patient's face. Right? We're essentially measuring from the corner of the mouth to the tragus of the ear. Sizing is important in that a device that is too small for the patient essentially will be ineffective, and a device that's too large for the patient may cause soft tissue obstruction by pushing that epiglottis over the patient's airway and obstructing the vocal cords. Placed appropriately in the patient and then rotate it into place. The second type of obstruction is alveolar obstruction. We manage that with a disposable peep valve. The peep valve is connected to our bag mask ventilator device by just snapping into place. On the side of the peep valve, our gradations for how much PEEP you want to actually deliver to that patient, and you can select that by simply turning the cap or dialing the cap to the desired amount. Finally, a tight-fitting mask is going to be attached to our bag mask ventilator and then placed on the patient. We have two sources of oxygen for all sick patients, two devices for obstruction, the first being soft tissue, the second alveolar, dealt with with a disposable PEEP valve. The next two is two hands on the patient's face to ensure that we've obtained a seal. At this point, you wouldn't maintain inline C-spine stabilization, but Steve's hands are gonna come off just to assist. 
the primary operator is gonna hold the mask onto the patient's face with two hands to ensure a seal. If we're unable to ensure a seal, essentially our high flow nasal prongs are ineffective and our PEEP valve does not deliver any positive pressure to that patient. The expertise in this entire procedure is that provided by the practitioner holding the face mask on the patient and ensuring the seal. You can do that with a number of different handholds, either with the C or E technique, right? and when your hands begin to fatigue, by moving to the thenar eminence of the thumbs and pulling that mandible up into the mask. Remembering always that this is essentially lifting the patient's face up into the mask, not pushing the mask down onto the patient. The final two is, by convention, two providers. The primary providers, both hands are taken up holding the mask and obtaining a mask seal, and so a second provider is required. That second provider may have a high degree of expertise, but may not. And so part of your responsibility as the primary provider is to ensure that the assistant squeezing the bag is not overventilating or hyperventilating that patient.